Hi guys, Rian here and today I'll be doing a complete guide on our beloved Kamisato Ayaka. Ayaka is a beast when it comes to pure cryo damage and makes her a very strong main DPS. But that is not the only role she can be played as. Ayaka is also by far the strongest cryo applicator and can serve as a consistent secondary DPS for your pyro main DPS. Before we start, let's talk about her kit. Ayaka is a cryo sword user that has a very smooth normal attack combo and one of the best charge attack multipliers in the game. This is why I would recommend using your charge attacks in between your normal attack string. Personally, I think the best attack pattern for her is 4 normal attacks, 1 charge attack. I will explain why later. Ayaka also has a unique dash similar to Mona, which allows her normal attacks to be infused with prior for 5 seconds once she pops up. Unlike characters such as Kachin, Hu Tao, and Chao, who requires their elemental skill and has to deal with cooldowns, Ayaka can do it anytime she wants and maintain a 100% cryo infusion uptime. What makes this a vital portion of her kit is her passive that increases her cryo damage by 18% once she pops up and hits an enemy. This is why you should dash on the enemy and maintain 18% cryo bonus damage at all times. This bonus lasts for 10 seconds which is considered quite a long duration. Next, her elemental skill Kamisato Art Hyoka is a very simple AoE cryo attack around her with a very decent skill multiplier. This skill is very good if you plan to do melts before you start your attack patterns. Here, I will demonstrate a very simple combo with Burnett without any of their elemental bursts. I use Burnett's elemental skill to apply Pyro, then switch to Ayaka to dash and immediately use Ayaka's elemental skill. Watch this closely. Although Ayaka's dash triggers melt when she pops up, the Pyro status on the enemy is not removed immediately. This allows me to do a quick melt before using my normal attacks. This has to do with elemental gauge theory. Burnett's elemental skill applies 4 units of pyro, while Ayaka's dash applies too little cryo to remove the pyro status, even after triggering melt. On screen, you see me hit for 43k, but for some reason there is not a text that indicates it is a melt, but this is actually my melt damage. Without melt, I'm only hitting for 25k damage, as shown when I hit the Sissin flies. Ayaka's elemental skill also has a passive that increases her normal and charge attacks by 30% for 6 seconds. This buff can be seen on Ayaka when an icy aura envelops her. This is where her ideal attack pattern comes in. Remember why I said 4 normal attack 1 charge attack is good? Watch closely. This is because within the 6 seconds duration, you are able to perform this attack pattern twice before the buff runs out. Lastly is her elemental burst and is probably the main reason why she is so strong. Ayaka's elemental burst, Kamisato Art Sometsu, does 19 slashes and 1 final explosion at the end, over a duration of 5 seconds. At talent level 9, that is 3915% skill damage multiplier, which is absolutely insane. Her burst alone is able to cut through almost any enemy in the game with a press of a button. Well, there are some drawbacks to this absolutely powerful IC chainsaw. Firstly, it has an 80 energy cost, so spamming it like how Venti spams his tornado isn't possible. Even if you manage to regain her energy, you will still need to deal with the 20 seconds cooldown. Secondly, it is not guaranteed for you to hit all 20 hits from her burst on a single target, especially versus targets that move around. Let's take the new Inazuma enemies who dash a lot for an example. It is not rare for these enemies to dash out of her burst. This brings us to our next topic. The reason why Freeze team comps are so strong with Ayaka is because with Freeze, you can guarantee every of her elemental bursts to hit the target. Characters like Mona and Sengchu mix up a good team with Ayaka. Let's talk about Mona first. There are multiple builds to Mona. Mona can be played as a sub DPS that relies on her elemental burst, Stellaris Phantasm, to deal a huge load of damage with his high damage multiplier. A Mona with Skyward Atlas and Hydro Noblesse set is able to pop 100k damage when she is well invested. But there is also another way to build Mona, not as a sub DPS but a full support. Just slap on Trilling Tales of Dragon with 4-piece Noblesse or 4-piece Millilith set and you are good to go. A combination of that with the Omen debuff is able to amplify Ayaka's damage significantly. Her base level and talent level is not too important for this build. As you can see, my Mona is only at level 20. As for Sing Chiu, he can only be played as a sub DPS, but a very strong one for that matter. Sing Chiu is a character that works very well with any character who uses a lot of normal attacks, and Ayaka is one of the best at it. 
As compared to Mona, Sing Chu has a higher freeze up time on the enemy, and you do not need to switch out of Ayaka as often. Another good pair with Ayaka is Chao. This is sort of a double main DPS team and you will need to invest on both characters. For this team, Chao will be the main DPS while Ayaka functions as a sub DPS. As soon as you use Ayaka's burst, switch to Chao and use your Hydro Daggers to keep the enemies in place. I wouldn't say this is the most meta team, but if you ship both Chao and Ayaka, this is a team that works well. But if you decide not to play a freeze team, melt teams are also an option. Remember when I said Ayaka is the strongest cryo applicator in the game? Because the elemental burst is able to hit 4 times per second and apply cryo, any pyro DPS is able to perform multiple melt reactions within that duration. My favorite character for a melt team is Ayaka with Xiangling. When Ayaka uses the elemental burst, Pyronado is able to melt on every single hit which adds up to a lot of damage from both sides. This works very similar to a reverse vaporize team with Xiangling and Chao, but instead of a 1.5 times vaporize, it is a 2 times melt damage. A double main DPS melt team such as Hu Tao or Diluc with Ayaka is also possible. When Ayaka's elemental burst is active, Hu Tao and Diluc is able to melt consistently. For a double DPS team like this, Ayaka doesn't need to stay on the field all the time. You can also save on your talent book upgrades by just adding her elemental burst. So that's about it for the second character slot, which is basically the reaction DPS slot. There are only two teams that I would consider strong, freeze teams or melt teams. Depending on the reaction you want to play, that will decide the second character on your team. As for the third character, I will always prefer to run a Viridescent support. It doesn't matter if it's Jin, Sucrose, Kazuha, Animal Traveler or the soon to come Sayu. Viridescent supports are able to boost your team's damage significantly with very little investment. With a Viridescent support, Ayaka doesn't actually need to rely on her elemental burst all the time. Here is me killing Chao with her normal attacks and skill together with an Animal support. But if you were to ask me who is the best Animal support, I would say Kazuha with Freedom Swan. But if you do not have the Freedom Swan, Kazuha with Iron Sting or Sucrose with Trilling Tales of Dragon will be the next best thing. Both of these characters give more than just a simple Viridescent buff, but also increase your elemental bonus damage or attack percent. As for the fourth support, it is very flexible. Zhongli and Burnett are always good characters for the team. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain why. Diona is also a good pair with Ayaka for the bonus crit rate with Cryo Resonance. Diona also serves as a very good battery for Ayaka, who has an 80 energy cost. But if you are using Jin or Sayu that plays a double role as a Viridescent support as well as a healer, then the fourth slot can basically be any character. Rosaria can be a cryo battery with cryo resonance, similar to Diona. Well, that's about it for Ayaka's team comp. Let me know how you guys are building your Ayaka teams in the comments. Next, we move on to her artifacts. I know everyone is saying Blizzard Strayer 4 piece is her best in slot, but that only applies to freeze teams. If you are playing a melt team, Blizzard Gladiators will be a better option. As for your stats, you will want attack percent on your timepiece, cryo bonus damage on your goblet, and crit damage on your circlet if you are using a Blizzard Strayer set for a freeze team. If you are running a melt team, your circlet will be either crit rate or crit damage depending on your weapon. Blizzard Strayer is a very strong artifact set, however it has its weaknesses. Against enemies with an elemental shield that isn't hydro, the Blizzard Strayer effect does not apply. This leaves Ayaka with a very low crit rate until you break the shield. Here you can see Ayaka is unable to freeze the Electro Metachul, resulting it in dashing away out of the elemental burst. I decided to do a damage comparison for Ayaka's artifacts and these are my results. Here you will see a change in crit damage and crit rate because I'm calculating the Emblem of Severed Fate and the Blizzard Gladiator set with a crit rate circlet. As for the bonus multiplier here, this is from the Emblem of Severed Fate's 4-piece effect. Based on my calculations, the Blizzard 4-piece set on frozen targets performed the best. This is followed by the Emblem of Severed Fate with a staggering 18% decrease in DPS. Followed closely behind is the Blizzard Strayer on enemies affected by Cryo only, but not frozen. Then Blizzard Gladiator set. By far the worst performer is Blizzard Strayer versus targets who are not affected by Cryo at all. This is why Ayaka hates enemies with elemental shields. 
Now we move on to her weapons. Ayaka's best in slot is going to be the Mist Splitter Reforge by a long shot. This is especially true if you're using the Blizzard Strayer 4 piece set, just like 99% of Ayaka mains out there. The Mist Splitter is a complicated weapon, and I'm going to try simplify it for you. It has the highest base attack of any sword, combined with the most desired crit damage stat up to 44%. It also comes with two passives. The first passive increases all of Ayaka's elemental damage by 12%. This not just apply to cryo bonus damage, but also pyro, animo, geo, and so on, except physical damage. The second passive also gives elemental bonus damage based on your stacks. You can gain stacks by using infused normal attacks, using an elemental burst and having less than 100% energy. For Ayaka to gain maximum cryo bonus damage from her passive, she will need to use her dash, normal attack once, then cast her elemental burst. The next best weapon for Ayaka will be the Primordial Jade Cutter. Although your damage numbers won't be as high as Mist Splitter, your crit rate is no longer a worry. A combination of Jade Cutter with Blizzard Strayer gives you 64% crit rate on enemies affected by Cryo, or 84% crit rate on frozen targets. All you need is 16% crit rate on your substats and you will be hitting crits on every single hit. Next we have the Summit Shaper. Theoretically, the Summit Shaper has a higher DPS than the Jade Cutter. However, for that to happen, you will need a shield and do up to 4 to 5 normal attacks before using her burst for the maximum effect. This makes Ayaka's gameplay very restrictive, and hence I will be ranking it lower. Right after the Sami Shaper is surprisingly a 4 star weapon, the Blackcliff Longsword. Because the Blizzard Strayer gives so much crit rate, any crit damage weapon is going to scale really well with Ayaka. I will recommend every free to play player to get one copy of the Blackcliff Longsword if you are playing a main DPS sword user. Weapons like Aquila, Favonia, and the Black Sword are also very good options if you do not have the weapons mentioned above. Unlike Jade Cutter, the Black Sword doesn't have ridiculous amount of crit rate, and you won't really have to worry too much about over crit. As for the best craftable weapon, it will be the new craftable sword, Amenoma Kageuchi. This sword not only fits the theme of a katana perfect for Ayaka, it also has a balance of good attack stats with some energy regeneration. Since Ayaka has 80 energy costs, the passive of Amenoma Kaguyuchi is really good with her. Lastly, we have a Constellations and to be honest, I'm not the best person for this because I only play 5 star characters at Constellation 0. But I'm going to give you my opinion from what I've seen on a lot of Constellation showcase. Her Constellation 1 reduces her elemental skill cooldown when she uses normal or charge attacks. From what I've seen, if Ayaka is constantly attacking, you can reduce the skill cooldown by around 3 seconds. This puts her elemental skill cooldown from 10 seconds to 7 seconds. Her Constellation 2 is probably her best constellation if you ask me. This makes her fire 3 elemental bursts instead of just one. The middle elemental burst does the original damage, while the ones on the left and on the right does 20% of the original damage. Although her elemental burst shoots out in a cone shape, if the target is right in front of you, all three of her elemental bursts can hit the same target, effectively dealing 40% more damage. If you did not already know, Ayaka's elemental burst will stay in place when it hits a target, unlike Deluxe burst that just fly past the enemy. So if the target is stunned or frozen in front of you, and you activate her burst, all three Somatsu will stay on the same location, dealing insane amount of damage at the same time. I would say her value constellation is at C2. Constellation 3 and 4 further amplifies her elemental burst. Constellation 3 raises her burst by 3 levels while Constellation 4 reduces her target's defense by 30% which is quite huge. This is not elemental shred but defense shred which is very hard to get. As for Constellation 5, it increases Ayaka's skill by 3 levels but really not something you will want to aim for. As for Constellation 6, I don't really find it particularly strong mainly because it only occurs once every 10 seconds. Ayaka's charge attack is strong, but it's not that insane. It makes her charge attack from 30k to 80k, unlike Eula that pumps her damage from 700k to 1.5 million. The multiplier is high, but the base skill damage isn't. If any of you have Constellation 6 Ayaka, let me know in the comments if it's really impactful or not. From what I can tell, it is nice but not utterly broken like Eula or Hu Tao. That about covers everything you need to know about Ayaka. My thoughts on Ayaka is she is really strong, but not really a must pull. If you already have characters like Ganyu, Yula, Xiao or Hu Tao, and you are not really looking for a main DPS, you may want to consider saving your primo gems. In patch 2.1, we will be getting many more waifu such as Kokomi or even the Electro Archon Baal. But if you are an avid waifu collector like me, I guess eating instant noodles for a month for Ayaka isn't too bad. 
If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.